Hello, friends, and welcome to Storytime. Today, we're going to be reading the book, Wobble the Witch Cat. This book is by Mary Calhoun, and it's illustrated by Roger Duvoisin. This is the front cover, this is the back cover, and this is the spine. Wobble the Witch Cat. Wobble the Witch Cat. This is the title page. Once upon a Halloween, there was a good witch named Maggie who owned a very grumpy witch cat named Wobble. They lived together in a teetery little house on the edge of town. Maggie was a fat, chuckling old lady with short gray hair. Robble was as cross as he was black. He was very, very grumpy. He hadn't always been cross. Once he had been just as good as Maggie. It was all the fault of a new broomstick that Maggie had gotten for the last Halloween. It had a thin, slippery handle, and it was so hard to ride on that Wobble was afraid he would fall off. He had even tried wrapping his tail around the stick but he just couldn't balance on the thin seat. Just as the broomstick rose from the ground, he did fall off. He climbed on again quickly, but it gave him a bad scare. What's worse, all the witch cats had laughed at Wobble as he wobbled across the sky. Now it was almost Halloween again, and Wobble grew very cross out riding the broomstick. He grumped and he yowled, and he ran under Maggie's feet, just on purpose. Look, she almost fell. Only yesterday, it had almost upset the old lady as she carried her pans of witch's brew to the oven. She was making magic wish cookies to set out for the children when they came trick-or-treating. Wobble refused to go out and howl on fences as a proper witch cat should. Instead, he crouched in a corner twitching his whiskers and grumbling to himself about the broomstick. The day before Halloween, he even knocked the jack-o'-lantern out of the window. That evening, Maggie said gaily, tomorrow night we'll ride again. And Wobble, that unhappy cat, actually humped his back and spat at her. Spat at his old friend, Maggie. Late that night, while Maggie slept, Wobble went to on his soft black feet to the broom closet. There hung the witch's broomstick, shining faintly with magic, all ready for Halloween. Wobble grabbed the stick with his teeth and pulled it down. Out the back door he pulled it, out through the backyard, out to the trash barrel. He pushed the broom into the barrel and then he scampered back to the house for a good night's sleep. Oh, no, he threw out the broomstick. Early the next morning, the rubbish truck came along and took the witch's broomstick away. Uh oh, so now it's all gone. Maggie can't even go look in the trash can because the trash can came, trash truck came and took it away. All that day, Wobble was in a much better temper. When the sky began to darken and Maggie got out her black cape and pointed black hat, Wobble just licked his fur and purred. Time to dust up my broomstick and get ready to go, Maggie told him. We must sweep the stars clean in our part of the sky so the children here will be able to see when they go trick-or-treating. But Wobble just grinned a black witch cat grin. Maggie went to the broom closet and opened the door. The broomstick was gone. There was only a great empty place where the broom usually hung. Oh, fiddle. Now, where did I put my broom? Maggie worried. I keep it hanging in this closet all year. She looked on the back porch. No broomstick. The witch cat chased his tail. He must have been really happy. Maggie scurried all over the house, peering into every nook and cranny, but no broomstick anywhere. Wobble danced on his hind legs, pretending he was chasing a fly. Oh dear, where is my magic broomstick? the old witch cried. We can't fly up into the sky without it, and there's no time to go to the Witch of the Mountain for a new one. Ooh, look, her hands are on her, her head. She's so worried. Wobble sat down and tried to look sad. Is he looking sad? 
I don't think so. But his yellow eyes gleamed. It's almost dark now, Maggie muttered, pulling at her hair. Whatever shall we do? I wonder if I have an extra broom in the closet. She opened the closet door again. No, there was nothing in the closet but her vacuum cleaner. Maggie started to turn away. Then she looked back at the vacuum cleaner. What was that strange glow about it? Galloping ghost, she shouted. It looks magic. Do you guys see the glow around it? All year, the broom had been hanging over the vacuum cleaner in the closet. Maybe the magic of the broom dripped off onto the vacuum cleaner. Maggie cried, maybe the cleaner will fly. You think it will fly? I don't know, it's not a broomstick, it's a vacuum cleaner. Wobble stopped waving his long tail and began to look worried. We'll just have to try it, the old witch said. All the other witches will be out sweeping their parts of the sky. What a disgrace if our piece of the sky is dirty on Halloween night. Come on, Wobble. She smacked on the pointed black hat and pulled the vacuum cleaner out into the backyard. But Wobble ran under the stove. He crouched there, yowling with fear. I don't think he wants to ride a vacuum cleaner. Maggie got down on her knees and tried to pull him out. Nice, Wobble, don't be afraid, she tried to soothe him. The cat just braced his feet and growled. I don't think he wants to fly in the vacuum cleaner. At last, Maggie had to drag him out. She tucked him tightly under her arm and went back to the vacuum cleaner. The machine glowed strangely in the moonlight. Now I'll ride on the handle and you can ride on the bag on the back, she told Wobble. And don't you dare jump off. Oh my goodness, look, he's on the back. Wobble sat down stiffly and dug his claws into the cloth of the bag. He hoped the vacuum cleaner wouldn't fly. Abracadabra, sis, boom, bob, Maggie shouted. The vacuum cleaner trembled, gave a jerk, and up into the air it rose. High into the Halloween sky sailed Maggie and Wobble on the vacuum cleaner. Suddenly, Wobble realized something wonderful. The vacuum cleaner's bag made a nice wide seat. He wasn't wobbling. Wow, he wasn't wobbling like a regular broomstick. He cried happily. Then he curled up on the bag and began to lick his fur. Wobble was going to enjoy this Halloween ride. As Maggie and Wobble flew near a flock of witches, all the cats screeched with laughter. Here comes Wobbling Wobble. And then they stared in surprise. For Wobble flipped his tail smartly at them and sailed on by comfortable as his own cushion at home. He is much more comfortable than all the other witches. I mean, all the other cats are just on the part of the broomstick, but he is comfortable lying down on the back of the vacuum cleaner. When the boys and girls came out of their houses, dressed as clowns and cowboys and witches and ghosts, they looked up in the sky. Oh, oh, cried a little girl in a red riding hood cape. I think I saw a witch up there. And what's she riding on? What's she riding on? The other children looked up and sure enough, flying across the moon was a little speck. There's a little speck right there. It looked like a witch and a cat doing loop-de-loops on a vacuum cleaner. Look, they're upside down. There they are, Maggie and Wobble flying across the moon. The end. So friends, this book was called Wobble the Witch Cat, and it told the story of Wobble, who was really scared to fly on a new broomstick, but it ended up being okay. That is Wobble the Witch Cat by Mary Calhoun and Robert Devoisin. Thanks friends, and I'll see you next time.